Hello and welcome to my channel and to this first video of the Canix video series. But what will we do in this video series? Well, first of all we will take a look at what Canix is. Then we will see how Canix works and then we will of course take a look at how we can program Canix devices with the help of the EDS6. And the great thing about this video series is that we will use Canix Virtual to simulate Canix devices. This means that you can program exactly the same as I do in my videos and we don't have different parameter names due to different devices. Because in the end we will use the same devices in the EDS6 that are simulated by Canix Virtual. But before we can program Canix devices, we first of all have to take a look at the basics of Canix. And this is what we will do after the intro. What is Canix at all? Well, Canix is a bus system for building control. This means that it enables the communication between components of the building automation. So for example, buttons, switches and the corresponding actuators. But in addition to that, also components like visualizations and interfaces to subsystems like Philips Hue and Amazon Echo are possible. But why the effort to use such KNX components? Well, therefore we have to take a look at the conventional installation. So here in this example you can see two switches and a light. So a changeover circuit. And you can also see the necessary cables. So to the first switch we need three wires, to the second switch five wires and to the light itself we also need three wires. So a lot of cable that we need in order to make the circuit work. And even then higher level functions such as timers or central functions can only be implemented to a limited extent. And this is where KNX comes in place. As you can see here with KNX the whole circuit now looks different. To the push button sensor only goes a bus wire with the conductor diameter of 0.8 millimeters. And in this case you only see two wires but in practical use we would have four wires. But even then the cable is much smaller than before. To the lightning itself goes a cable with three wires directly from the distribution. So not from the push button sensor but from the distribution. And there sits an actuator which also has a connection to the KNX bus, so to the green wire. And the switching actuator then switches the light on and off. And it receives the information when to switch the light on and off via the bus wire. So whenever a user presses the push button, the sensor then sends a telegram onto the bus wire which the actuator reacts to and turns the light on or off. So therefore central functions such as timers can now easily be implemented. The corresponding module only has to be connected to the bus wire and parametrized and is then capable of switching the light on and off. Therefore KNX devices have a logic that executes these functions. And in contrast to other bus systems, this logic is distributed to the individual devices and is not only available on a single device. This has the big advantage that devices can be exchanged without the whole system to come to a standstill. Thus, each sensor and actuator have a CPU inside which evaluate these functions. So for example a push button sensor can distinguish between a short and a long button press while actuators on the other side have functions like switch on, switch off delays or even more complex functions like constant light control. And all the communication between the devices is done via the green bus line and the other three communication media. Three further communication media? Well KNX supports four communication media types. The first of it we already saw. This is KNX TP, that stands for KNX Twisted Pair, and there the communication takes place via the green bus wire. The second media type is KNX PL, and is ideal for retrofitting because there the communication takes place via the existing electrical installation, so there is no need to lay down new bus wires. But to be fair, 
this is a system which can be seen as that because there are no manufacturers that produce devices for this media type. What we could use instead for retrofitting is KNX RF. In KNX RF, the communication takes place via radio and therefore we also don't need to lay down new wires and can simply connect devices to KNX via radio. Well, and the last media type is KNX IP and as the name already suggests, there the devices are connected via the existing network installation, so via the local area network or for example also via Wi-Fi. Furthermore, it should be noted that KNX now exists since over 13 years and with more than 500 manufacturers that support KNX, it has established itself as an industry standard. But that's enough theory for this video. I think you saw pretty clearly where the advantages of KNX against the conventional installation and other bus systems are. I hope you enjoyed the video and if yes, consider a like and subscribe to get notified for new videos. In the next video, we want to start and dive deep into KNX, therefore we take a look at the devices that exist for KNX. So see you in the next video.